face when that scripture was being read. Ooh, what are you talking about? Creature with all kind of eyes and all kind of... Yeah, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about it for a little bit. Amen. All right. Amen. amen. Revelation is the fourth chapter in the first verse and it reads, After this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking to me which said, Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. I will show these things which must be hereafter. Amen? Amen. I just want to preach today uh, from the topic, When We All Get to Heaven. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, uh, when we all get to heaven. I'm going to try to get through this, y'all. Pray for me. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that you cover this place with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Open the hearts and the minds of this waiting congregation. Amen. They might receive the words you have deposited into your servant's spirit. I furthermore request, Lord, if you would, take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. They might not see me, but Christ in me. Amen. Lord, I ask right now that you bless somebody's soul, that you cleanse and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. 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 When we all get to heaven. I don't know, what do you think of when you think of heaven? You know, we've been told many stories and we've had many uh, depictions of heaven when, uh, uh, from television and from movies and some folk uh, even try to figure out what the Bible has to say about heaven and uh, some of us uh, uh, sing about it and talk about it and we, we, we dream about it but Everybody in this room probably has a different version of heaven than the one sitting next to them. We get some kind of some mixed images in our mind when we start to think about heaven. Am I right about it? For some, heaven is a place with great lakes and ponds and bodies of water where they can just hang around and fish all day long. That's heaven to somebody. Amen? Another, other folk might be a place where there's an endless mall where you can just shop and shop and your credit is never run out. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> For other folks, you know, heaven might be a big sports arena where we can just sit and eat and drink and watch our favorite teams play over and over and over and, and our team never loses. <laughs> that might be heaven to somebody. Amen? <laughs> and still others, heaven might be a place with all-you-can-eat buffets. <laughs> one right after the other. <laughs> and all you do all day is just eat and eat. And you don't even need a doggy bag because you can just eat all day long. <laughs> the one thing we do 
tend to believe in if we're going to church is that we all go into heaven. But each of us has a different picture of heaven in our mind. Uh, so, I don't know. Some of us might be right. <laughs> Some of us might miss the mark. Amen? We have been, though, promised eternal life. We've been promised eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Am I right about it? Amen. And we really don't know what heaven will be like. But we do have glimpses of the eternal place of our rest in the scripture. Now, what we do know caught our imagination, pricked our spirit, got us excited about being on the right team. Amen? We know it will be a place with peace. We know it's going to be some joy there. We know there's going to be some worship and one thing that we, 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 we ought to be sure of is that Jesus is going to be there. All right. Am I right? Amen. I don't know about you, but my goal, my ultimate goal is to make it to heaven. All right. While I'm down here on earth, I might want to make a little money or buy a little bit of this or, or live in this or drive this or whatever the case may be. But my ultimate goal is to make it to heaven. Amen. Is that yours? Amen. Uh, I'm not going through all of this for nothing. Amen? Amen? I'm working hard right now to please the Master. Amen? Oh, yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. The text here focuses on the revelation of Jesus Christ that was given to John when he was uh, exiled to the Isle of Patmos. Mm -hmm. Don't know anything about that? Mm -hmm. And what Jesus showed him in this revelation was uh, uh, a glimpse of the last days and then a glimpse of a place called heaven. Amen? Amen. The revelation gives us a prophetic picture of events that will take place in the last few years of this world all that right. we live in right now. It was filled with all kind of images and they get a little confusing and you're like, what is this? And what's with the horses? And what's with this thing with all the eyes? And all that kind of stuff. And it can be a little overwhelming. All right. But when it, it, it clarifies everything. If you study this book, it, it, it clarifies everything to you and it gives you certain truths mm -hmm. about the future. Between chapters 4 and 20 of the Revelation, the world will be exposed to all kind of troubling events. Mm -hmm. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. There's going to be pestilence uh, of kind that that, that we have to wrestle with. I don't know if you know what pestilence is, but pestilence is disease. Mm -hmm. Disease will start to spread around the world. Amen? Amen? And these occurrences were symbolized by these horsemen mm -hmm. that are talked about. Mm -hmm. It's symbolized by mm -hmm. the blowing of certain trumpets. And it's symbolized by the emptying of certain vials. Mm -hmm. When these things happen, happen certain events will begin to appear on the earth. Mm -hmm. They don't appear all at once, but they appear in succession mm -hmm. until they become overwhelming. Amen? Amen. The, the events that are in chapter 4 through 20 will have consequences for the saved because, uh, I mean, the consequences for the unsaved, but little consequences for those who are saved mm -hmm. because the torments and trouble won't affect those that are saved because they'll be what the Bible uh, refers to as being caught up or raptured. Okay. Amen? Before these yeah. events happen. Mm -hmm. Our best descriptions of heaven come in Revelation 21 through 22. Mm -hmm. In these chapters, they describe this beautiful city, the streets of gold and beautiful splendor of the city called New Jerusalem. Now, I want you to understand that the streets of gold and that all these other things that are pictured, the, the pearly gates and all these things, they're descriptions of someone who didn't really know what he was looking at. Okay. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. But he came as close as he could to trying to describe this place to us. Okay. It's just like if you saw a Martian. <laughs> Anybody ever saw a Martian? Okay, all right, you don't want to raise your hand, but uh, uh, 
If you see a Martian and you never saw a Martian, the way you describe a Martian is you describe it by uh, relating it to something that you've already seen. Right. You might say the Martian has eyes like a cat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. it, has, it, has, it has smooth skin, kind of grayish, like gunmetal gray. Okay. Amen? Uh -huh. And you would have to describe it by things that you know. And this uh -huh. is how John was describing heaven. Okay. The invitation was given to him. Come up here. And I'm going to show you things that must take place after this. Christ revealed to John the preparations being made for hell. For Satan and his followers. And how we as Christians were going to get our heavenly reward. He said, I will show you tribulation. I'll show you a lake of fire. I'll show you a place called heaven. I'll show you an atmosphere of happiness and joy. Amen? Amen? That's going to exist for those who are saved. And we're going to see him in the fullness of his glory being worshipped. Mm -hmm. That's what they meant by the kings bowing down and laying their crowns mm -hmm. in front of him and worshipping him. Amen? Amen? You know, I got some heavenly talk for you today. Because we're trying to get to heaven. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But none of us really know what it is. No. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I might not know what heaven is precisely. Mm -hmm. But I know what it ain't. I know that. Yeah. And one thing that is not. Mm -hmm. Heaven is not a get together. No. Y'all better hear me today. Uh -huh. Heaven is not a get together. Uh -huh. See, in this life, we love to have get together. One of the things that COVID-19 really uh, 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 took away from us is our little get-togethers. Am I right about it? Right, right. And, and a get-together is just when a couple friends get together, y'all talk, or y'all y'all play some spades, or, 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 or whatever y'all do with y'all friends when you get together with them. Amen? Get-together is just a little social thing. Otherwise... Uh, 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 by people that otherwise enjoy each other's company. Y'all just like being around each other. It ain't no real party. It ain't no dressing up. It's just a little get together. I meet you over your house. We might have a little something to eat. We might watch a little something on television. It's just a get together. It's hard for us to do that nowadays. And some of us are getting depressed because we can't have our little get together. But I want you to know today that heaven ain't going to be no get together. Heaven will not be no small get-together. That's why Christ said, uh, told John in this text, I will show you. So in Revelation 7, we get a picture of 144,000 people coming up out of tribulation. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. But then John saw another number in Revelation 7 and 9. He said, after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. All of the nations, the tribes, the people, and tongue, standing before the throne of the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. These were the ones coming out of tribulation, alone. They didn't have a, a group or, uh, uh, or anything. This is not including the billions of people who died in the centuries before the, the, the rapture. No, it's not them. See, when we all get to heaven... Uh -huh. It won't be no small get together. Wow. There are going to be billions of folk. Somebody's mama going to be there. Somebody's daddy going to be there. And great grandmama going to be there. And great 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 grandmama going to be there. And all the ancestors from down through the years. When we all get to heaven, it ain't going to be no get together. All right, all right. And then another thing that it's not going to be, it's not going to be no gathering. Right. We like gatherings. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we've seen gatherings or, or crowds of folk. A gathering may be some people that are brought together for a particular occasion or a particular event. Or, uh, uh, they, but they all may not have the same purpose. You got folk that come together. Some come to protest and some come to counter protest. Mm -hmm. And they make up a big group that all, that's all meet up in one place. But it's just a gathering. 
Somebody put something on Facebook and somebody else put something out and somebody and they told two friends and they told two friends and all of them gathered together. They might not know each other at all, but it's just the gathering of people. Are y'all hearing me today? When the saints come together, it ain't going to be no gathering. See, because when Christ entered into Jerusalem, there was a gathering. There was some folk over there hollering, Hosanna. But that same gathering, those same people said, crucify him. That same gathering shouted out in just a few days, crucify him. A gathering may be a crowd, but everybody in the crowd may not have the same purpose. When the saints assemble, it ain't going to be no gathering. John said there are thousands upon thousands of saints from all generations, but they all have one purpose, and that is to declare the glory of God. Everybody going to be there, but they're going to be there for the same purpose. Revelations 5 and 11 says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times, 10,000 and thousands and thousands. 12 saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. In heaven, we're going to all have the same mind. We're going to all be on one accord. We're going to all be there trying to see Jesus. We're going to all be there trying to lift him up. We're going to all be there trying to praise his name. When the saints go marching in, it ain't going to be no gathering. Because there ain't going to be no haters there. There ain't going to be those that, that criticize us. There ain't going to be those that don't believe. It won't be no gathering, but it's going to be a big number. It's a number that a songwriter said, Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. I don't know how many going to be there, but I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Then you know what? Heaven ain't going to be no happening. Yeah, we like happenings. Amen? We've seen a lot of happenings in our lifetime. Am I right about it? Yeah. When there's a happening, there's some big event that's going on and it draws a big crowd and 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 there are like side shows and smaller events that go on outside there's vendors and all kind of people like that outside <laughs> of the main event that's a happening amen uh -huh. at a happening you got folk that may not even be going to the event but they tailgate uh -huh. <laughs> you got people selling food and you got people selling uh t-shirts and you got uh -huh. side celebrations Every year the Super Bowl goes off and it's a happening. Right. And it features a parade and parties and concerts and vendors and eventually a football game. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people attending the happening don't even go to the game. That's right. They just go for the party. Yeah. Amen. That's right. They might not have been able to get a ticket to the game. But they just there for the happening to be in the atmosphere. That's it. When we get to heaven, it ain't going to be no happening. Uh -huh. There won't be any side show. Oh, no. While the saints are praising God, there won't be nobody selling nothing. There won't be nobody hocking nothing. There won't be no t-shirts being sold. All of our attention will be on the Lamb of God. Amen. Revelation 7 and 15 said, Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and they serve Him day and night in His temple. Amen. And He who sits on the throne dwells among them. When we all get to heaven, you all going to have one purpose. All right. To live eternally and please God. He's going to dwell with us. Amen. And we're going to focus our attention on Him. Amen. It won't be a happening because we ain't going to have no diversions. It won't be a happening because there be nothing to take our mind off the Savior. Amen. We're going to be with Him all day long. You know what, one of my favorite groups, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, tried to capture the ultimate heavenly experience and describe what they thought we'll do. They wrote these words, one of these mornings it won't be long. You're going to look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going to a place where I have nothing, nothing to do but just walk around heaven. Y'all don't hear me. Walk around heaven all day. Brothers and sisters, when we all get to heaven, it's going to be a day of celebration. Yeah. 
when we all get to heaven, it ain't going to be no get-together with just a few hand-picked folk. When we all get to heaven, it ain't going to be no gathering with haters mixed in there with us. When we all get to heaven, it ain't going to be no event or spectacle with all these side shows and vendors on the side. But when we all get to heaven, it's going to be a celebration where we sing and shout the victory, where we praise our Lord day and night. Down here, I got to travel through this barren land on my way to heaven. All of us got a picture in our mind of our heavenly destination and what life is going to be like when we get to heaven. But everybody got a different picture. Somebody see people flying around with white robes and angels' wings while somebody else see this picturesque scenes of people sitting in rocking chairs down by the riverside. All right. Somebody else see some folks sipping on milk and washing that down with honey. Somebody see us walking down golden streets and living in a big mansion with diamond studded door knobs and golden bathtubs and movie sized television screens. But when we all get to heaven, we don't know what it's going to be like but the Bible says that eye has not seen and the ear has not heard neither have it entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Before he left, Jesus told his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes, Lord. And where I am, yeah. ye may be also. When we all get to heaven, every day going to be Sunday and the Sabbath will never end. When we all get to heaven, it'll be howdy, howdy and never goodbye. When we all get to heaven, her spills won't roll. I heard a songwriter say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. When we all see Jesus, we're going to sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, we'll see Jesus that died on Calvary. When we all get to heaven, we'll see Jesus that was buried in the borrowed tomb. When we all get to heaven, we'll see Jesus Sunday morning, when we all get to heaven, we gonna get the victory. When we all get to heaven, somebody gonna see that sun again. When we all get to heaven, somebody gonna see that daughter again. When we all get to heaven, somebody gonna see grandmama one more time. When we all get to heaven, we gonna see and see and I heard somebody say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. I can't wait to get my place. I want to be in that number. I want to see my little son again. I want to see my father again. I want to see my cousin one more time. Ain't he all right? When we all get and shout anybody just want to see it for yourself anybody just want to see it for yourself lock hands with grandmama you know how she used to talk about the Lord and walk on down Victory Road on my way to see Jesus. I done been through it all. I done made it through it all. I raised the children. I kept the faith. I didn't give up. Now I want to see Jesus for myself.
about you, but I'm tired of being sad. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of worrying. I'm just going to leave it in the hands of the Lord. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, you will. You say, how am I going to get there? protecting us Lord as we see numbers climb as we hear bad reports Lord but you protected us all Lord we know you protected us because we're still here Lord you looked after our children and Lord we lost some battles along the way some of us lost some loved ones along the way but Lord, when we all get to heaven, Lord, and we can see you face to face and tell you how we made it over, how you brought us through, how sometimes in the midnight hour all we had was the thought of Jesus on our side. We just want to thank you, Lord, because you've been good. Thank you for the food and thank you for the provisions. Thank you for just keeping us going while others are go hungry. You kept food on our table and clothes on our back. You've been a good God. Lord, I ask right now that you touch the register family. They'll go by and visit them one by one. Touch the McClendon family right now. Continue to bless them. Touch the heart of Sister Singleton right now. Lord, look after all of those that are homebound. Deacon Leroy McMillan and Mother Young. Sister Paula. Sister Pat. Lord, Lord, just look after all of our members that cannot be here. Then, Lord, bless this church. Bless us to continue the work that you've given us. As we go our separate ways, Lord, don't dismiss, us, don't dismiss us from your presence. Lord, we love you today. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let the people of God say amen. 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 amen.